All right, we are back live to API Days New York 2020. Thanks everybody for joining us today. This is gonna be the second part of our second day conference. You are on the technical stage. In case you see something wrong, you can click on stage and go back to the other one if you need. Uh, the chat is on the right in case in case anything it's uh, in case you want to interact with the speakers. Uh, we're going to be starting right now. The next speaker we have is Prezemek Kulik. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, he's a senior director of product management at Software AG, and his presentation is going to be about agility and complexity in microservices architecture. I'm going to be leaving the stage, so take it away. Thank you, Vincenzo. Welcome, everybody. Um, let me kick it off with a question. What is wrong with the monolith? And why is nobody asking the question, actually? Um, and don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm a fan of everything micro microservices. But let me walk you through uh, what I, what I want to do today. You know, actually, there's many things wrong with uh, the monolith, but that that itself is not enough to jump straight to microservices. Uh, don't go to microservice architecture simply because there's something wrong with the monolith. You know, find out what is wrong and consider microservices or something else. What I want to say is that microservices are not the ultimate solution to everything, and again, a fun. Uh, it sounds like a truism, but still many people just, just do microservices for that reason. It's it's the hype, the bad, monolith bad, microservices good. Um, as a matter of fact, while distributed architectures solve some problems, they may be creating new problems elsewhere. Uh, as Vincenzo said, my name is Psham Kulig. I'm the product manager for API management at Software AG. And my topic for today is the trade-off between agility and complexity uh, when doing microservices architectures and the impact it has on API management. We're on API days. I'm the API product manager. So without further ado, um, we've over the years, we've been building architectures like this you know, nice base layered architectures with the backend service enablement platform integration going to API management, APIs serving the front ends, the mobile, um, anything we want. Nice and clean, but you know, it gets complicated over time as we add things, as we embrace new frameworks and new technologies. It is not as clean as as nice as we had it on, on the origi original blueprint. You know, actually, you know, you know, let's take a look at you know what we're building. We're breaking down the monolith, hopefully for the good reasons, right? And I hinted at the beginning, to build more distributed architectures like microservices. To we do this to isolate the changes, to be able to bring features quicker to production. We do this to do things on our schedule, not the other team's schedule, right? We we want to be the development team that works on my piece. I don't depend on the others. That's why we break it down into smaller chunks. Um, and all good, right? Um, we we break down the monolith into microservices. There are you know, emerging patterns for this, like the strangling pattern and the others, we we do this. So far, so good. Uh, we go even farther. We go into service mesh, uh, which is starting to shape us as the platform that is blending the integration logic with the business logic, right? Which brings even more agility, right? We embrace the serverless even. So it, we, we just strive for being more agile, more flexible. And as we as we decompose the monolith into the smaller chunks, we achieve that, right? That, that is good, but does it come free of cost? Um, actually, well, not. Uh, we, while we increase this uh, agility and flexibility for us, we're also increasing our operational complexity. Meaning, if I have one monolith to run, it's easier to run it and maintain it if I have three microservices, right? And it, that's easier if I have ten, and that's even easier than I have, you know, one hundred. That's obvious, right? So while we get this agility and flexibility, we're actually making other people's lives more difficult. The operations people, you know, someone has to learn to run our microservices platform. Someone has to make sure they they do run it. They do things that 
that uh, we want so that we as developers can do something I'm calling happy coding, right? Um, service mesh and, and microservices, they actually allow developers to focus on coding the business logic while the infrastructure takes care of the, all the other things. So, you know, logging, security, um, throttling, um, you know, connectivity, service discovery, all these things, right? So, uh, Developers, we as developers, we kind of expect the infrastructure to do this for for us. And is this expectation wrong? No, it's not wrong, right? That that's that's what the infrastructure should be uh, giving us. But it doesn't happen magically, you know. Someone has to take care of it. So we developers are happy, but the ops people are not, and we have to. Um, deal with it. So we're, we're not removing this complexity or, or not completely. We're just pushing this to other people's places saying, you you do this, right? Um, and, and the key to understand uh, all of it is that we are not starting from the green field, mostly, right? I mean, I know this picture is nice and, and soothing and calm, and we would like to start from here, but but we are not, right? We have some monolith. We have some other things that we started working with, right? So our architecture will uh, most likely um, look a bit differently. We will have... We will have a mixture of these architectures, you know, accumulated over the years. So we'll, we'll, have, we'll have service mesh or actually multiple service meshes and we will have the mesh of meshes as well right uh, the complexity rises we will have independent microservices to do something we will have uh, the monolith and we will we will need to connect it all remembering that at the end of the day we have our experience layer we have our you know point of sale systems we have our mobiles applications and whatnot we have the api layer that at the end of the day wants to wants to consume it right so um we need to bring it all together to merge all these different frameworks connect them to each other right and expose them in a way that it's still available through our api management platform for uh the consuming teams to um to use and um that thing itself calls out for a specific type of technology to make it happen right when we take a look at the api management platforms and and the heart of it the the active part of it the api gateway we can distinguish between the uh the edge gateways the main gateways some people call them different names but these are the gateways that cater for uh the public traffic for everything that you know originated from outside of our boundaries uh and goes inside or that that originated inside and wants to go outside. I mean, the north-south traffic thing is nothing new. It's a security people's term. They've been using this for years. It, it simply denotes something that is considered public and needs more uh, more attention. So API gateways that we know and use, they have been built and designed for that. But with microservices and service mesh, there is this new kind of traffic that, that is growing in 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 volumes and levels exponentially because now we have microservices talking to each other. This is the east-west traffic. This is the private traffic that has different needs. And sometimes it has different requirements for the things to happen close to the microservice. And, and that's why um, to be able to um, meet the requirements of these traffics and the use cases that, you know, that come from them, we need a dedicated type of a gateway. We need the main gateway that is suited for doing the api management stuff and um, and doing the public traffic and the need, we need the micro gateways that help us uh, serve the east west traffic private traffic between the microservices so that when we go to um to the service mesh we don't need to build yet another integration spaghetti or the death star architecture people call them different names connecting peer-to-peer -peer everyone to each other we we have micro gateways 
acting as sidecars to our microservices and ensuring that the plumbing in our uh, service mesh is working, ensuring that uh, the service discovery works, that the services are connected, that the architecture is you know resilient, is fault tolerant, and we're recovering from failures. This is this magic that we expect from the infrastructure to do so that we as developers can do the happy coding. Right, um, the the micro gateways are are enabling this this thing. However, is it good enough? Right, if we go back to the architectures we're building, monolith microservices service mesh, the service mesh provides us with this um, this plumbing, as I said, to with, to do the service discoverability, observability, tracing is there, security is there, the plumbing is there. But um, because of the very nature of um, the service mesh implementations, um, they're lacking a big piece of what we need in API management. There's a big gap in these implementations. By, by, their, very, by their very nature, as I said, they, they're completely ignoring everything that is above layer four of the stack that is above the network layer. Meaning if I want to um, do data masking, I need to write code. If I want to understand who the user is and I want to understand who the user is at the microservice, I, I need to write that code. I mean, some of you may remember uh, the security breach at the US Postal Service, right? Uh, that, you know, simply because uh, the service was a, recognizing the application that was calling it it was it was good but it was actually wasn't checking who's behind this application right um, again if I want to do things like that I need to be able to implement security close to my microservice and and for this I need a sidecar to my microservice with service mesh implementations today I would have to write code in my microservice to do this. I would have to write code to route the traffic based on the data or the context of the call. Or I would like to write. I would have to write the code to um, um, to to have some business analytics, and uh, that actually goes against what we wanted to do. Right? We were decomposing the monolith to into microservices into service mesh, so that we as developers can do the happy coding and can not worry about the infrastructure of things like uh, like security and the others. So why is service mesh is setting me back, right? That's that's a big gap and then that's something we need to um, take care for. And again, th there's another point of impact of the service mesh implementations on API management platforms, right? Again, if we, if we build our architectures with, you know, some traditional models with, with microservices. We have it with the mesh or without the mesh. Um, we need to combine the micro gateway with the API gateway so that we have the, so to speak, control plane outside my mesh and the meshes and the mesh of meshes from where I can instrument these things that developers don't want to code in their microservices and shouldn't code in, the, shouldn't code in their microservices. I need to instrument it and kind of inject it in the service mesh in the form of a sidecar that, that can understand the application and the business uh, layer of things, something that service meshes cannot do. So in, in essence, I want to take the service mesh and, and transform it in something we at Software AG call app mesh, uh, which essentially kind of takes this code that you would have to code into your microservice and transforms it into the configuration that your API gateway is allowing you to do so that we have the picture that we wanted. We we code the microservices only for the business logic they do, and the infrastructure is doing the magic that the developers wanted. I mean, there's, it's no magic, right? It's it's the functionality of the API management platform with all the goodness that API gateways give, and um, with all the functionality that API management platforms give us with the um, um, understanding on the API layers, understanding the application context, understanding the, the business context for control and, um, and visibility, right? So uh, in 
in, in, in runtime, in real world scenario, it would work in a way that you set up your API gateway to introspect service mesh to see what is there. Um, selecting your services that you want to have some your instrumentation uh, happening. Uh, you configure your policies because in gateways we configure policies saying I want the data masking to happen uh, if this person cannot see the employee's salary because they are not HR, right? Or if if the APA, incoming API call is calling for uh, a specific product and they are calling from specific region, we, maybe we should um, route it to a specific, specific uh, microservice, right? The, these are the things that gateways are, are built for and can do. So you, you do this configuration on the API gateway side and uh, uh, and once you're done, you simply um, deploy this enforcement into service mesh uh, by injecting a micro gateway in this environment, not changing the way that service mesh works, right? Because if, if you guys use service meshes such as, you know, Istio, for example, right? It comes with its own um, HD proxy Envoy, right? Uh, we're not changing how Envoy works. We're just adding our additional sidecar that does the enforcement that uh, the Envoy would not be able to do. So that's the nature of things. Unintrusively add the, the business layer, the application layer of enforcements that you need on top of your uh, service mesh. So that at the end, you know, we're looking at an, an architecture that uh, that kind of combines the, uh, the uh, integration frameworks with API management frameworks uh, in a way to, to cater for microservices architectures and, and service meshes, right? In, in order for us to really build a service mesh based architecture that is working and, and we, you know, and we understand it, we need to uh, employ some things like, you know, domain driven design, CQRS or, or, or whatnot. We need to architect it um, properly so that so that we, we we can manage this, and this again brings additional co uh, complexity. So we need some kind of umbre an umbrella solution that will be able to take care of it. And API management is something that can actually help here very much. So we will have our deployments of you know let's let's call them you know traditional when we have we're happy with the monolith and paste layer architecture and things are happening, right? And we will uh, this will be one of our domains, and we will expose things from this domain through an API gateway. Uh, we may have additional domains where we have, again, some, some parts built the ways that we, we used to have, but we started building things using microservices, and that's fine. This is part of our domain that we are mixing design. Some things are, some teams are working with microservices, some teams are working with monolith. This is fine. This is being managed as a monolith, or as, as a domain, I'm sorry. And uh, again, we let it out of the domain through an API gateway. Uh, and we can have multiple of these domains. It really depends on our design, right? What we do next is uh, we connect these domains to each other, right? If they need to talk and exchange information. Once we're happy with this and we have the domains interrelated and it's nice distributed architecture, but organized, there are gateways, there are entryways from the one domain to another, we can start exposing this to the north-south traffic, to the to the public use, right? And for this, we use another component of um, of the uh, API management platform, which is API portal or portals, right? Um, you know, mostly it's one portal. I'm just for the sake of of the completeness of the picture I'm showing here too, but it can be one portal. We may employ some API governance. We have may have some engagement platform just to complement the picture. So API management here serves as a solution that provides control and visibility over the distributed architectures we're build, that we're building because these distributed architectures will use APIs, obviously, as the connection points between them. So um, to, to make it happen, you will need an API, API management platform that, that provides all of it. API portal, API gateway, and a dedicated micro gateway, one that was designed and built for the purpose. Uh, hope uh, it's 
um, clear for you guys what I went through very quickly. If you are the R at Software AG, uh, there's a couple of ways to check. You can try our stuff for free on software, softwareag.cloud. <coughs> Excuse me. You can visit us on GitHub. Uh, you can check what the analysts are saying about us, and there are new things um, from analysts coming soon. On August 6th, we will be talking to Randy Hefner from Forrester on, on how to avoid common pitfalls in building uh, microservices, right? So uh, uh, make sure you guys uh, check it out. Um, and that was it for me. Back to you, Vicenza. Okay, yeah, I was able to connect again. Okay, thanks very much for your presentation. I think we have time for, for probably one question that I see. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, let's let's give it a try. So okay. the question is from Abiram and he's asking, most if not all of the microservice implementation which we can do, you know, we can probably do the same thing by using domain-driven, modular, loosely coupled, high cohesive monolith approach and deliver probably the same promises and the same value. Uh, and with microservices, you, you, you just show that uh, we're introducing so many complexity to the system. Do you in general agree? Can you put some lights? When do you think there is the borderline where it's like, you know, it we got to do microservices or not? Uh, it's a very good point, especially about the domain-driven design. I did not spend too much time on this one, on this session. Uh, we were actually going to talk about it on, on the on the talk that I'm going to do with Randy Hefner from Forrester as domain-driven design as one of the methods to, uh, to control the chaos. Because when we go into distributed architectures, microservices, service mesh, we will have multiple of them. So controlling one mesh is one thing. Controlling second mesh is another thing. But then I will build this mesh of meshes as well. And uh, I need, and this, this meshes will be my domains, right? I didn't dig deeper into this. But I need to be able to control these domains as well and connect them in a control way. And that's why I'm bringing the notion of the API gateways here as the, uh, the entryways and the paths between the domains so that you know, we, by controlling within the mesh only, we don't create a mess on the higher level between the meshes. So uh, domain-driven design is one of the things that can definitely help here. I, I completely, completely agree with the comment. Yeah, and you know, for, for the audience, there is a fantastic book about it, domain-driven design. It's gigantic. It's gonna take you ages to read. Yeah. But at least to me, you know, it was kind of changing the way I was thinking about software, to be honest. I, and the I, concept I is not I new itself. Right? So it's, late. it's concept is not new, Vincenzo, right? It, 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 it's, it, has, it has a long beard, but it's getting new traction right now with the distributed architectures we're building. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're super in time. So thank you, Prezek, for being with us today. And sure. we're going to be skipping for, thank you. We're going to be skipping